everybody, Sarah here. So today's morph deep dive might seem a little choppy. Some of the clips were from when I recorded the normal types video last time I did a morph deep dive, but I didn't want that video to be too long and these things seem to be a little bit more unrelated to that, so I thought I would give them their own video. Uh, before we jump in though, I want to say thank you to all of our channel members. I'll put you guys right over here. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, your contribution to the channel keeps this channel going and it allows me to make all of the content that I make. I would not be able to do all of these things like the book reviews without you guys, so I really, really appreciate it. Uh, any money that goes into the channel from you guys uh, goes straight back into the channel from me. I do not keep the money. I want to make this channel the best for you guys as well. So uh, if anybody else who's not a member would like to become a member, it's $2 a month. You do get your own content on top of everything else that I make. I make an extra video for members every single week. Uh, you will also get access to live videos after they're over. If you don't have the money to become a member, it's perfectly fine. It will not take away from the education on the channel. It's just a little way to say thanks. There's also a little super thanks underneath this video as well. Well, uh, it's a little heart with a dollar sign in it if you just want to make a one-time contribution to the channel. Again, there's no pressure in doing that either. I also want to thank Reptilinks for essentially sponsoring this channel. Uh, it's not a direct sponsor, but it's kind of an indirect sponsor. So uh, if you guys would like to try Reptilinks, they do have a $100 money back guarantee. I will put the link in the description down below if you would like to go check them out. And you can use my code SarahSnake27 at checkout if you would like to get a discount on those as well. Also remember to check out sarahsnakeshop.com for corn snakes and corn snake accessories. I do not have any babies available on there right now, but I have like seven dozen babies that have hatched and so they will be available on there once they are ready and feeding. If you would like to see uh, all of these hatch, you can check out my playlist called Babies Hatching. I will try to link it somewhere uh, so that you guys can go check that out. I have babies hatching and I will be uploading videos about them hatching over the next few weeks. And if you would like any update photos of them as they grow or as they are ready to go to new homes, you can go to my Facebook. That's probably the best place to find all of that information. Uh, it's just Sarah Snake Shop on Facebook. I'll link that below as well. So this video is about three very strange uh, genes or gene mutations that we see in corn snakes. We're not sure if they're just types of normal, selectively bred things, or if they are actually gene mutations because there's not too many people working with any of them. The one that has the most information is actually the weirdo mutation. These weirdos originated with Catherine Turley. She had purchased a, an Anne Tessera and an Emil Motley from Don Soderbergh and bred them together and ended up with these sort of yellow babies that were uh, similar to buff as she described a little bit more yellow almost looked like they might have even been from like a creamsicle line or something uh, and they also were very hypo looking especially if you look at the belly the the overall aesthetic definitely looks like similar to a hypo buff but it just isn't quite the same so she held back a pair of babies from that original pairing and bred them together and that is what created our first batch of weirdos now we do see this we call them tessera siblings we see this in a lot of offspring of tessera that are not visual tessera where they kind of have a very strange look to them many people have said that they appear to have an extra layer of color uh, their saddles seem to be much more uniform in shape uh, and there's just something a little off about them at times Usually when you breed these Tessera siblings uh, to other snakes, that look does not typically pass on. However, in this line, it did. And so now we have this line of what are called weirdo babies or weirdo corn snakes. And uh, most of them were then given to VMS or sold to VMS uh, after Kathleen Turley decided to not be in the hobby anymore. And so if you are interested in getting in any of these, uh, VMS is going to be the place to do it. And you probably won't be able to do it for very long because he doesn't have very many left and he's also retiring. So um, if you would like to get your hands on a project that not many people are working on, that's the place to go. The main thing to note about these, not only is the weird pattern, but also the over excessive like, yellow tone in the snakes uh, and she even mentioned this when she was talking about uh, other anneries and especially anery tesseras that were related to the anery tessera that she uh, got from Don uh, that they also inherited this sort of overly yellow tone. I don't have a whole lot more to say about this. We know the basic history uh, of them. Ex we just don't know exactly what it is. We do know that it passes on in uh, the first generation, so it might be a dominant mutation, or it could just be some weird look that just 
kind of carries over from Tessera that disappears in some lines but doesn't disappear in others. And of course it may not have anything to do with being a Tessera sibling. It may just be coincidence that they look similar and that the original weirdos came out of Tessera. But it's hard to say. It's hard to know. These are sort of our unknown sort of mystery morphs right now. Speaking of mystery morphs, I do want to quickly throw in here that I actually did buy a very strange sort of mystery snake from VMS that also came from Tessera lines that were probably related to Catherine Turley's lines. In fact, uh, it's almost certain that they were. Uh, all of these snakes display a very odd amount of yellow, uh, especially or even the anneries that typically don't show a whole lot of yellow, uh, but the snake that I got from VMS is supposed to genetically be a, either a a coral ghost or a coral annery and uh, he has a lot of yellow on him and that was something that Catherine mentioned specifically in any anneries that came out of that line is that they seemed very yellow for being annery. So this mystery that I have from VMS may be the same thing or maybe different from weirdo. We don't really know. So we have a lot of these sort of odd for lack of a better word words for these sort of unknown strange uh, snake morphs that we see. Speaking of odd, odd is the next one that I want to talk about. Odd is one of those that not too many people are working with. It also causes the pattern to be a little bit more chaotic. It also, to me, seems like it turns the saddles almost into like a like a bone shape. So whereas the saddles are normally shaped kind of like that, it almost seems to shape them a little bit more like that, kind of like a bow tie almost. Uh, and again, not too many people are working with it. The few people who I know who have actually tried to work with it, uh, it seems like there is a very high mortality rate in them uh, and very few females like survive laying eggs. So um, it's, it's, who knows? I don't know, but I thought I would at least kind of show you guys what I'm looking at. I know that a lot of these uh, have been mixed with other mutations that I've shown you, but that's because that's the only information that we have. The only photos that I can find are ones of, you know, mixed mutations. So uh, just kind of keep a look at the pattern on those instead of thinking about the color. Odd is, has probably been around, uh, I don't want to say it's been around the longest, probably Weirdo has been around the longest, but Odd has probably been around the second longest. Odd popped up here and there, uh, I don't really have an exact history of odd. Uh, they have kind of more of a chaotic pattern. All of these, all of these morphs have a very chaotic pattern to them. All of the odds that I have seen seem to have a very high amount of the saddle color in the rest of their body color as well. So in the Annery versions, the saddle color is going to be that dark black or gray. And then in the amelanistic versions, it's going to be more of an orange or a red. And it seems like these colors sort of saturate the face and a little bit more of the ground color than in the average corn snake. One big problem that we see with the odd gene is that a lot of them don't seem to make it to adulthood. Uh, there's been a couple of females here and there that I've seen uh, go up to adulthood and some have successfully bred and produced offspring and some of those offspring do also have uh, a little bit of that strange pattern. Uh, so once again I got part of the way through recording and found more information on the odd gene as I was researching looking for photos and things just pop up when you research stuff. It's amazing. So I'm going to read to you part of a paper that was written by a, bi by a biology professor, Eileen Underwood. I will um, make a Google Doc or something and link it down below so you guys can go reference this as well. But uh, essentially they were test breeding odd and non-odd corn snakes for their fertility. And I thought this might be really interesting for you guys to know and understand, especially for the sake of this specific video. So 68 pairings were done between non-odd males and non-odd females. 23 pairings were done between odd males and non-odd females. 13 pairings were done of non-odd males to odd females and eight pairings were done from odd males to odd females. Hatch rates in clutches laid by odd females were lower than 10%, only 19 out of 250 eggs hatched. Crosses with non-odd females 
even with odd males, exhibited greater hatch rates ranging between 50 to 60 percent, which is about eight, which is 834 out of 1,371 eggs. Mortality data showed that 65 snakes have died since the beginning of the odd study in 2005. So this has been around a while. I'm not 100% sure if this has been around longer than Weirdo. I'll put a yes or no up in the corner right there, and we'll find out after I do this. 31% uh, were odd, 27% were non-odd. So of the ones that had passed away, the 31% were odd, 27% were non-odd. Interesting, because 27 plus 31 is not 100, but okay. Well, more females uh, than males died, this trend was consistent between both odd and non-odd females. Evidence fails to support that odd snakes exhibit greater mortality, but does support that odd females exhibit lower fertility. Future studies are in place to examine blah, blah, blah. So there's that. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to make that available to you guys in one way or another by linking it below. Uh, if I'm unable to do that, I will just put it up on the screen right here and you guys can screenshot it. I got it as an image when I was researching. I did not actually find the text. So if I do not find a reasonable way to uh, get this to you in some other way, uh, I may do both. I, I may just type it up myself and put it in a Google Doc for you to go find. I'm also going to upload a Google Doc with the weirdo information that I have because uh, I have links to forums and stuff like that as well. I just want to take a second to give a huge thank you to Mariah Wrighty for doing a lot of like a breeding research with her female who was able to lay eggs successfully and she's doing just fine. I'm going to post some photos over here of like some of the offspring that she showed from from that breeding. Um, all of that is still in progress, but a lot of the photos from these are hers. And so thank you, Mariah, for posting this information where it's able to be found because sometimes we just can't find information on a lot of these genes and gene mutations and uh, that is my biggest problem with gene x which is why i saved it for last there was a, another paper segment that mariah posted and it pretty much just explained that the odd corn snakes seemed to have a very slow growth rate in comparison to other normal corn snakes or uh, just non-odd corn snakes. So that's another thing to keep in mind about these is that they just are not going to grow quite as quickly. Uh, I'm also going to make that part of that paper available as well wherever I end up putting it. So if anyone out there has any more information on the odd gene in corn snakes, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear it. So I'm going to start with the gene X. Gene X is probably the newest of these and I've been seeing it just popped up here and there and it seems to kind of make the pattern a lot more frosted just overall and make it a little bit more chaotic. Uh, I don't really know how else to explain it. I'm just going to show pictures and you guys can kind of see for yourselves what I'm looking at I guess. Uh, gene X Corns seem to have a little bit more of that bone pattern and chaotic pattern as well. To me personally gene X looks more like just something that may have come over from a hybrid breeding, perhaps a breeding with some sort of other rat snake, uh, but it's hard to say for sure, and I don't really have much history on it. In fact, I have less information on this than I do on anything else. So uh, I just thought I would mention it, put it in here. Gene X is out there, and a lot of people uh, are mentioning it, but don't really know anything about it. Now this is different from Purple X, which is one that I mentioned in a video I did a little while back of like corn snake morphs you've never heard of. I will link that above if you would like to go watch that. So if you know any more about any of these things, please leave it in the comments or you can send me an email, sarahsnakeshop at gmail.com. I'll put that in the description as well because I would love to know any more information that any of you guys may have on these. I just thought this was a really interesting one and since I was originally going to talk about it in the last Morph Deep Dive, uh, but I just didn't quite fit in it, I thought I would make a whole video talking just about it. It's a little bit shorter than my normal deep dive, but I thought it would be fun to bring these to the surface and uh, see if anybody else out there knows anything more about them. That's going to be all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, thank you to all of the members, anybody who's leaving a super thanks. Please like, subscribe, share, do all the fun things, and I'll see you in the next video, which is going to be a book review on one of Mike McEachern's books. I'm very excited about it. It's a little bit of an older book, so uh, we kind of already know a little bit more about these older books and how they don't always score quite
quite as high, but they are definitely very interesting pieces of history. And also, if you would like a chance to win Don Soderbergh's book, go check out this video that I'm linking above right now, wherever it is, and uh, leave a comment. Anybody who leaves a comment will get a chance to win the book in the drawing next week. It's free shipping in the U.S. and outside the U.S. The book is still free. You may just have to pay for shipping. I'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching.